Canva recently launched a tool to design websites, but is it actually useful? Can you build a real website using this tool? Now, most professional designers look down on tools like Canva, but I actually think it's really interesting. And I've actually found out myself using this tool for actual client projects. For example, when it comes to business cards, I used to professionally design them in a tool like uh, InDesign, but then clients can't edit the cards themselves if they have a new employee or something like that. So when I deliver uh, a Canva file to them, they can just create new cards, edit the text, and then even you know save as a PDF with croak mark. So it's actually a professional tool. We've even used it in Flux Academy to design you know some eBooks that we're working on because just because how easy it is to collaborate with our writers. And so I'm not I'm not looking down on everything. I'm going to give this a try. And so in this video, I'm actually going to take this website that we've designed in Figma in an earlier video, which you can check here if you want. And I'm going to try and build this in Canva and see how it goes. Let's give this a try. Okay, so we are now in Canva and I have chosen websites here. So this is what I want to create. And you can see that I have a bunch of templates right here. I can also start from blank. And what I want to build is this basic landing page that I have here designed in Figma. So let me start off, I can start with the blank one, but let me start off by checking, uh, see maybe if there's a template that can help us just get started really easier. And actually, I see this one, which has also kind of like a dark background, a hero, uh, a button with a round corner. So let me get started. Yeah, this template looks like a good place to get started with. And let's click customize this template. It's going to open up kind of like this new thing. And you can see here that I have basically the page built here. Now, it's very funny, it says apply all six pages, but it's actually not six pages. It's actually just different sections of the website, but Canva calls them sections. And this, to me, this just basically clears that they basically had kind of like a PowerPoint slideshow uh, presentation creator, and they just said, hey, how about we turn this into a website? Um, so it's pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and give this a try, see how we can uh, change these things. So basically we have the templates here. We can choose from different kind of like layouts and we can change styles of colors. So color palettes and stuff like this. So let's, let's actually start off by trying to bring this on. So for starter, let me copy this text and I can paste it right here and let's see how they handle the fonts. So here I have this font, let me see what fonts I'm using here. So this is a font called Outfit from Google Fonts. And if I come here and try to see they're using a different kind of fonts and there are a bunch of fonts here and I can even go ahead and upload my own fonts if I want. But if I write Outfit, um, Outfit, they don't seem to have this particular Google font and I can't seem to be able to add other Google fonts, but I can again upload a font if probably from premium or something like this, but this font looks pretty similar. So let, let's go ahead and stick to this. I also have this uh, body text here, which is just smaller. So let me see how I'm going to go ahead and add a text to this. Uh, so I'm going to go here into elements and then we have, let's see if we have text elements. Where are these? So let me see if we have here. Oh, actually text is a different uh, element here. So let me grab this paste this. Now, one thing that I find a bit weird is this, if I'm going down here into 18 points, uh, which is what we have here, right? This is, note the difference, right? This is 18 points. If I check the body font right here, it's 18 points. This one is 18 points as well, but it looks way, way bigger. So I guess this is not correlated to actual pixels as we would see them on something like Figma. Okay, then we have the button. Now, one thing that is actually nice, let me delete these images from here. And actually, maybe instead of deleting them, maybe I can drop my image right into here. So here I have this hero image. Let's drop it in here. And it's actually, yep, replacing it. I don't need this background. So I have my image here. And maybe let's replace this with, you know, with, we have, let me delete this and delete this and let's drag our logo, which is SVG. So can we load SVGs here? Yeah, we can seem to load SVG and it's scalable. So that's nice. I'm gonna drag that here. 
Uh, let me see how I can change the colors of this. So this is looks like it's a group, right? I can ungroup this or let me see if I double click this. Yeah, I can edit. You see, I have a gradient here. I actually don't want a gradient. I just want a solid color. Let me see. Um, it's a nice thing here that when I'm picking the colors, I have this, uh, it's actually taken out the colors from the image to create a color palette. That's actually nice. So I automatically can have, you know, this as my text and just change the text color to white. I can probably go ahead pretty easily and do this outline. Now note, probably I can't change this into outline. I can just, this is weird. There's no kind of like fill or outline as you would find uh, in Figma, which is basically the same button, but with a different fill to it, right? So this one has a stroke to it while this one has a fill to it. So here, if I wanna have an outline, let me see, I probably need to go into an element and then here maybe find, maybe need to take this. Here, yeah, here, th this element does seem to have both a fill, which I can use as a stroke. So I can recreate this button right here. Now to turn this into a button, I would right click and then link it somewhere. And this is where we start to actually find the limitations of this project. If I wanna take it to a different page, there's actually no way to add more pages here. So this is basically just a single landing page that I can create. Um, and this is quite of a large limitation, right? So even if I want to do something like ha have this button scroll to a section number two, there's actually no way for me to link that right now. So if I can link, um, oh, I can actually do link it to, let's say pages number two, page two. Um, and then let's actually test this out. So let's do the preview. And let's see how this works. So this is now a link, click, slide. Okay, so the in-page linking works, but now this gets an underline because this is a link. Let's also check out the responsiveness of this. So responsiveness, overall, it's nice that it broke this down into two columns. So this is nice, but the problem is I can't actually change the mobile view. So if I wanted to change something, for example, if I want this to be centered on mobile view or have the buttons aligned, because it's kind of weird that this is left aligned and these are centered, I can't control that. So this is quite of a large limitation. Let me see if I can either remove this underline or change. I want to have kind of like a hover state. When I hover over this, I want this to change. Let's go ahead and publish this website so we can check this out. Um, so let's publish it on a free domain. So I have task.myconva site. Let's go ahead and publish this. And let's see how this works and responds. So now I can view my website, open up on a new tab. So note here, something that's weird. This button, the, this, the actual background is not linkable. Only the text is linkable, which is weird. Uh, the text does take me up to the next section. And is this responsive? So we do have kind of like a container holding this in the center. And then it's scaling up to this point where it all of a sudden becomes kind of like centered. So there are two breakpoints, mobile and landscape. There's nothing in the middle for maybe tablets. Um, and let me see if I can actually create hover animation for this, for this button. Oh no went out of the website. So let's open it up again. And let me see if, yeah, edits. I want to edit this design once it's published. Let me see, maybe I can add an effect. Do we have effects here? Effects. So shadow, lift, non curve. Okay. So I can't, okay. So these are just drop shadow effect. These are not animations. So I guess doesn't look like I can add animations right now. So if I would want to go ahead and continue this, I would probably have to create another section for this featured on, and I could probably do this by either re editing this section or just adding a new section with this new add page thing. So let's go ahead and just delete this. And instead, maybe I wanna uh, do this logo thing. 
So I need some kind of a, I need this rectangular, which we can put the logos in and it has a little bit of transparency. So let's see, let's go to elements, try to find a rectangular or actually a shape that we can do something like this with. I don't want text inside of it. Let's see, can we reduce opacity to it? So we have colors and um, we have colors, but it, we don't seem to have opacity for the color, or maybe this is transparency. Okay, so can reduce transparency just like this. And then I can go ahead and start dragging in my logos. So let me say I have this logo here and we can go ahead and probably put all of our logos inside. So this is how I would create something like this. Now, probably something like this. Let's see if we can align them. It's probably not gonna be very responsive, right? Because everything here is not really aligned to the page. Let's group this. And one more thing I wanna try is here I have in the background these kind of like gradients, which I can probably do if I have here, go back to elements, I have this kind of like gradient, so I can bring this up here, put this in the background and change the color to this and then copy and paste and up. Okay, so now we're seeing a problem, which is because uh, Canva is considering each one of these section as a page, things from page one or section number one cannot bleed into section number two. Now, one more thing that's going to happen, I'm going to publish this website again and go here and test it. No, it wasn't updated, I guess. Okay, so let's up publish again. Okay, let's test our website. Okay, so what you see right now is that everything is being cropped to the container of the frame. So this is one more thing that is problematic. And again, here, when we're gonna look at this section, oh, this one, this is actually quite surprising that it broke the logos into two columns. This is, I did not expect that, but you can also see that the padding on the left and the right are not equal here and I'm not sure whether I can fix this because I can't really control the mobile view of the design. All right, let's sum this up. All right, so to sum up and conclude my experience with Canva, right now the limitations around responsiveness and around the fact that you can only build a single page means that I'm actually not going to be able to use this on any real world project. That being said, if you're just starting out and it's, it's, it's actually free, it's actually has zero learning curve. So if you're looking for like a free template or something like that, just to put out your portfolio, or perhaps you want to create like an online proposal or something like that, perhaps it's something that you can use very fast with no excuses whatsoever. If you wanna look into a little bit more advanced tools like Webflow, check out this video here to dive into it and I'll see you in the next video, peace out.